You come in here this minute. Do you hear me? Look at you. You're a filthy mess, just like your room. I thought I told you to come right home from school and clean up your room. How many times do I have to tell you to do something? And what did I tell you about playing with those two? What do I have to do to make you do what you're told? Well, you just wait till your father comes home. We'll see if we can't find some way to make you listen. Now get in that house! My father! Maybe this will teach you a lesson. Two more persons were found dead this morning. They were killed with no apparent motive. This adds to the current rash of slaying still unsolved. The scalometer reads, sunny but windy. So all of you mommies, dress those little kitties warmly for a chilling high of 55 degrees. That's it for the 7 a.m. news. Have a nice day. Where is that baby? Judy's always leaving me to take care of the baby. I just can't stand it anymore. The baby does nothing but cry. I think I'll take a nap. Daddy, Daddy. Oh, go away, baby. I don't want to play now. Daddy, Daddy, please let's play. No, baby. One more word from you, especially if you cry. I want to throw you down the cellar. Daddy, Daddy. Ah! All right, baby. That's enough for you. Down in the cellar. Hi, kids. How are you doing? Oh. Huh? Tom, wait a minute. Look, Tom, I know you're uptight about it, and I know you feel it cuts down on the spontaneity of your whole thing, but I simply can't follow you if you don't at least stay close to your cue marks. It'll be all right, Richard. Don't worry about it. I'm paid to worry about it, Tom, but that doesn't seem to register with you. We've gone through this a hundred times before, but like today. Move your camera, Richard. I'm doing this show for children, not for you. I don't need you to tell me how to handle my job. I... Just beautiful. Not according to some people. Why such a long face? 
What happened to Let's Pretend? Carolyn, we've got to talk about this. No matter how many times we go through this, it doesn't seem to get through to him that he simply can't just... In a minute, Richard. In a minute. He started it, Carolyn. He's trying to tell me how to do my show, and he doesn't know anything about children. I'll come by later, okay? And fix you some dinner. Then we can talk about it. Just the two of us. Now, why don't you go get dressed, and then go to the park and spend the day with your friends? Come on, Tommy. Be a good boy now. Oh, and don't forget your show at the hospital this afternoon. I know you've got your problems, Carolyn, but you've got to appreciate mine, too. He just doesn't listen. I know that, Richard. But you've got to try to understand how he works. everywhere. Hey, now, you know that Uncle Larry is coming over for dinner tonight, and I have a big dinner to fix for all of us. So come on. I don't want to go. Well, and I don't know about you. With all these children, it isn't normal. But I'm going to talk with some people who have some authority about this. What have you been telling my Debbie? Do the mothers of these children know they're out here with you? I'll bet they don't. And I'm gonna see that somebody does know about it. You just wait and see. Are you gonna get it when you get home? You start crying and I'll really give you something to cry about, you little bitch. Bobby Serlin. Parents reported him missing about an hour ago. Said he never came home last night. I'm starved. You had any lunch? No, not yet. There's a good chance this one's more than routine. Oh, yeah? How's that? Well, the parents might be involved in this one. Father is Harold Serlin. He's a history professor up at the state. The old lady is a uh, Bookkeeper or something. Judy Serlin. <laughs> Terrific. Right out of model citizen factory, huh? So what's the catch? Well, about an hour before the parents made a report, we got an anonymous call. Probably a teenage boy, judging from the voice. Said he'd seen some parents beating up their kid pretty bad last night up on Pacific Street. Don't tell me, let me guess. That's Serlin kid's house, right? One and the same. Are you doing this? Okay, Harry, what do you got? Uh, not a damn thing so far, but we're searching the neighborhood. Well, what do you figure? I think it's a crock of shit. 
Well, we haven't found a trace of the kid yet. But I think there's something more to it than just the kid running away from home. What do you mean? Well, there's certain feelings you get sometimes. Just a certain sense of something that doesn't quite get it together. Then you start looking at the facts, laying them out one by one, and it doesn't take too long before you start to realize it. For Christ's sake, Harry, quit playing cops and robbers. Will you get to the point? Yeah, yeah, sure, okay. Uh, that anonymous call we got? Got some wheels going. From what we got in so far, Bobby Serlin was a real quiet kind of kid. You know, uh, not a lot of friends, all that kind of stuff. But here's the hooker. Now, he's been admitted to St. Luke's Hospital three times in the past year. And the medical reports aren't too clear on exactly what happened to him. Well, maybe he's just a sickly kid. Yeah, maybe. Uh, you want to talk to the parents? What do you think? Mr. Serlin, Mrs. Serlin, this is Lieutenant Hayes. He's in charge of your case, and uh, this is Sergeant Graham. How do you do, Lieutenant? Sergeant? Yes, yes. How are you? Sympathetic, Mr. Serlin. Very. I know what you must be going through, but if I'm going to help, I'll need a little more information. He couldn't have run away. He wouldn't do that. He loved us too much. You mean he doesn't anymore? What? You said loved us. Past tense. Oh, now, wait a minute, Lieutenant. I don't <laughs> think my wife meant it that way. What she was trying to say yeah, was that... Of course, that, uh... I understand. You're going through a difficult time. Uh, don't worry. We'll find him. But soon, please. You don't know how helpless he is. He's only five years old. He can't really take care of himself. Please, please. Uh, no, we're doing the best we can, Mrs. Sullivan. But uh, we got a better chance if you could just tell Lieutenant Hayes here. Uh, Harry, do me a favor, will you? Take Graham out and give him a rundown on the operation you got here, okay? Yeah, sure, okay. I, uh, I hesitate to go on with this, Mrs. Sullivan. No, no, it's, it's quite all right. I, I know you're trying to help us. When was the last time you saw Bobby? Oh. Uh, like I told the other officer last night when I put him to bed. And what time was that? Oh, 10 o'clock. Closer to 10.30, I'm sure. Well, 10 o'clock. And that's when he usually goes to bed. And uh, when did you notice that he was missing? I called him at 7.30. I always do. I called him three or four times. But that's not unusual. He always sleeps as late as you'll let him. He's kind of a lazy boy. But this morning... He wasn't in his bed. He wasn't there. He was gone. And it was a couple of hours after that we reported him missing. We um, checked around the neighborhood, of course, first. Then we waited around a little longer, uh, sort of hoping. Yeah, sure, I can see that. Uh, do you have any idea what he was wearing? Uh, yeah, uh, pants and shirt and that. <laughs> Levi's and a white <clears throat> shirt. I know because I looked in his closet, and the only thing missing is just Mr. the Levi's. Uh... I know you've been through all this before, but uh, can you think of any reason why Bobby would just pick up in the middle of the night? I mean, has he ever run away like this before? No, no, none at all. And did you have some kind of hassle with him? Uh, did you spank him or something in the past day or so? No, um, no, of course not. You mean you never spank him? Well, I wouldn't say never, no, but uh, <laughs> certainly not in the past few days. No, we, we, we were very close. I mean. Yeah, well... Ed? We'll find him. Here's the picture we got from the parents. Only problem is it's about two years old. And, uh, here's the hospital records. Fell off his bike. Fractured leg. Fell down the stairs. Concussion and multiple contusions. And pneumonia. It's the only one that doesn't seem to fit the pattern. You want to question him about it? What for? She's got all the answers. You want to know what I think? Not particularly, Harry, unless you got some proof to back it up. You want to hold him? Sure. On what? <sighs> no, just play that game. Listen, I'll check with you later. You check out the neighborhood, and I'll pick you up back at the station in a couple hours. I'll be at the hospital. Oh, oh my goodness, what's that? <laughs> it is I, Jack Ketch, and I have come to chop off your head because you've done some very evil deeds. 
They call me the executioner. Oh, Mr. Executioner, I'll, I'll tell you what. Why don't we just become partners? Oh, no. You're too mean for even me. I'm going to chop off your head. Oh, no, you're not. Oh, yes, I am. Oh, no, you're not. Oh, yes, I am. Oh, no, you're not. <laughs> Hi, Hi, Mr. Mr. Rabbit. How are you doing today? All right. OK. Want to play a game? Yeah. Are you sure? Yeah. Positive? Yeah. I don't know. I don't know if you do or not. <laughs> wow, all right then. This is the way the game goes. What's your name? Tommy. All right, good. You get a prize. What's your name? Anthony. Okay, Anthony. Hey, I think Anthony needs a big one. Good. Here's a toy for you. Are you sick? Yes. Well, I better check and see if your heart's going all right, okay? Okay, here we go. Cough. <laughs> cough. <laughs> I didn't say laugh, I said cough. <coughs> I can't hear a thing. I've gone deaf. <coughs> I can't hear a thing. <coughs> oh, oh my goodness. No, no, you wouldn't take my word for it, so now you can see for yourself. Well, for Christ's sake, all I ask you is how can you be sure? How can you prove it? You can't prove it. That's the problem. But you know, God, you know, a child has been beaten. All right, absolutely. All right, all right. I know, I know all about it. We've been through all this before, and it always comes back to the same thing. I need facts. Oh, yes, the facts. What do you call it? The index of suspicion to identify a battered child. Let me see now. One, characteristic age, usually under three. No, Two. All right, okay, okay, okay. I got the point. Now, what about Bobby Serlin? Oh, what about Bobby Serlin? How do you know he was beaten? What's your name? Jefferson. Special friend for you. Look, I can show you the reports here if that's what you want. At minutes, May 3rd, 1970, multiple contusions on head, examined for concussion. He fell down the stairs. <laughs> November 8th, 1970, at minutes, fracture of left leg and hip, fell off his bike. March 22nd, 1971, at minutes, pneumonia. All right, pneumonia. And that's the one that threw me. Oh, yeah. They said he must have had trouble breathing with this. It must be pneumonia. Well, the x-ray showed us why he was having trouble. He had four broken ribs. They didn't even know where he had fallen from that time. Now look, you're probably right. It probably isn't enough. Maybe he did fall down all the signs. You've got to admit there's a chance. No, no chance. Once you've seen a child who's been beaten, you know you fall. Not by the marks on the outside, by the ones inside. Let me show you something, Mr. Hardnose Detective. Lieutenant Hayes, I'd like you to meet Jefferson Taylor. How old are you, Jefferson? Hmm. Says here, Jefferson Taylor. 3315 Calvert Street, age five. Not as old as you'd like to be, Mr. Taylor. Hello, Jefferson. Well, you're not gonna get a response out of him like that. You've gotta threaten him. What happened to him? Fractured hip. We know by the way it's twisted. But we can't prove it. Well, what does the boy say? Nothing. He's too scared to say anything. That's the funny thing. People think that a child who's been beaten will rebel, become incorrigible, but it's just the opposite. Oh. Oh. Hi, Tom. Hello, everybody. My, it looks like we're having such a good time today. How about it, Jefferson? A child who's been beaten is completely docile. His senses, even his tears, are deadened by pain. He'll do anything you tell him to do, just as long as you 
don't want to hurt him again. Jefferson, raise your arm. Higher, Jefferson, like this. Now you keep it there. Beatrice, raise your arm above your head. Go ahead, now higher. You leave it right there. The minute I turn my head, she'll drop it. Well, why shouldn't she? She isn't afraid of me. It's only normal. Well, look at Jefferson. Jesus. Was Bobby certain like that? He held his arm up for 16 minutes. Hi, Lieutenant Hayes. Are you going to arrest them? That's all I want to know. What in the hell is this? I know Bobby Serlin. He's my friend. He's one of Mr. Rabby's rangers. Well, who are you? Mr. Rabby? That's the name I use on television. It's a children's show. Yeah, well, uh, Mr. Rabby, I can't arrest anybody. There's no crime involved. Did you arrest Jefferson's mommy and daddy? Mr. Rabby, that case is under current investigation. Yes, her condition is much improved. Uh, excuse me, Tom. Our visiting hours are from 2 to 5, and I know she'll be very glad to see you. Oh, that's all right. Goodbye, now. Nurse, I've been waiting an hour. I've come to get my daughter out of here. Now, somebody called me and said they wanted to see her again. I would like to know what it's all about. I'm sorry, Mrs. DeSica. You'll just have to wait to see Dr. Clark. Well, where is he? He's expecting you. He is on his way. Will you please be seated? Sorry, Tom. I just wanted to thank you personally. It means so much to the children when they know you're coming. Uh, Rosemary, your mother's here to take you home. Now, if you ever want to talk to me, I'm right here at the hospital, okay? Yes, Dr. Clark. Good. Nurse? What is going on here? If her leg's better, why don't they let her out of here? What do they want to see her again for? This is DeSeeker. Rosemary is a traumatized child, and I think you know what the problem is. We're going to have our psychiatrist talk with her. Are you trying to tell me my daughter's crazy? No, not crazy. She's emotionally disturbed. Well, I'm taking her out of here. Give me that. Come on, honey. You people act like you don't ever know what you're doing in these damn hospitals. To seek a child abuse, put it with the others. You didn't say anything to them, did you? No, Mommy, I didn't. You better not have. I didn't, I
Uh, Sanders and Reardon got two teams working up the north and south trails. Uh, you want me to start a downward trend? No, not yet. Cover it all the way up to here first. Then you better take the Serlins home. Yeah, right. Uh, I think I better take you home now, Mr. Sterlin. It's getting kind of late. Uh, it'll be dark in a few minutes, and there's not much more we can do up here. Uh, we'll leave an all-night crew, of course, just in case the boy cries out or something. Well, nothing so far. Father says that the kid always comes up here when he's feeling moody. Figures he probably got lost somewhere up in the hills. Well, uh, just keep at it. I'll take the squad car back with Johnson. See you in about an hour or so. Right. Mrs. Serlin, Mr. Serlin. You will come back and pick us up first thing in the morning, won't you? We have to be there when they start again. Now, well, just, just try to get some sleep, Mrs. Serlin, all right? And I'll be by about 5.30 in the morning to pick you up. Good night. Sergeant Matthews. Yeah? Nothing. Nothing. Find him tomorrow? I heard Sergeant Matthew say he'd be sending a team down the ridge first thing in the morning. Will they be able to tell anything? No. There'll be no question about the cause of death. Oh, my poor baby. I thought he could make me so happy. Why wasn't he good? Let's not think about it. Come on, come on. Come What's that? What? I heard something over there. Where? Are you sure? Thank you. 
Well, the way I figure, it comes up. Sees a new house under construction, decides to play around, climbs on the bricks, loses his balance, and 200 feet. Yeah. How the hell could a four-year-old kid get this far away from home in the middle of the night? Well, maybe like the father said, he came up here and got lost. And he had the accident. Maybe. Well, maybe that's the way it's supposed to look. Now, what have we got here? So, this is it, huh? Okay. Mm -hmm. You got a positive ID on him? Yeah. It's Bobby Serling, right? Look, if you want, we can call the parents right up here. No. No, we don't need them. Not yet, anyway. What's it look like to you, George? Just a minute, Vince. You know I need some time to make some blood samples. And come on, come on, come on. You got something, I can tell. This kid fell 200 feet over a hill right to the bottom, and that fall did quite a job on him. I mean, broken bones, head injuries, the whole bit. Look at these lacerations and abrasions, and look at this gash on the back of the head. Now look again. Do you notice anything unusual? Well, there's so little blood. Almost none. Now, if you fell 200 feet over a hill to the bottom, you would really bleed. Assuming, of course, that you were alive when you went over it. Okay, George. Now a live, say... warm body bleeds profusely. Old dead one doesn't. But that's not all. Now look at this. This kid has been beaten so badly that the flesh from his lower back and buttocks has been shredded off. And these blood tracings are older than those. You want to pull the parents in? On what grounds? Even if George could prove what he's saying, he's not too sure he can. How do we know they did it? Yeah, sure, I think so. But I'm getting a little tired of getting my ass kicked by some smart lawyer every time he gets into court. Jesus, Vince, how much more do we need? I had a case four months ago. Believe it or not, the parents put their daughter in the oven because she spilled her milk. They told us the whole story, confessed everything. They both got 27 months and were out on parole in eight. You want me to make a report just in case you need it tonight? No, no, not yet. Wait a minute. Yeah. Go ahead. We'll need it somewhere along the way. No, and George, don't go flapping your mouth off about this to anybody, okay? I wouldn't think of it. All right, damn it to hell. Call Burke. Tell him to make out a warrant for the servants. We'll pick him up when we leave here. Tell him it's homicide. Hi, love. You eating dinner? Dinner will be ready in just a minute. If you're still proud about that thing with Richard, forget it. He sent his apology. Said the whole thing was his fault. Uh-huh. Where's the salad dressing? Oh, never mind. I found it. Did you get a copy of the format for the birthday show? Thank you. 
Mr. Serlin. This is Hayes. We got a DB at the Serlin house on Pacific. Homicide. We'll need the SID boys and the coroner. We need pictures, fingerprints, the works. Graham, what'd you find? This is Serlin. Somebody really nailed her. How was it at the hospital today? Were all your friends there? Not all of them. But isn't that wonderful? That means some of them are all better and have gone home. Bobby didn't go home. And he won't get all better either, I bet. Bobby who? Bobby Serlin. Bobby Serlin? Bobby Serlin. I know that name, don't I? Has he been on... He's the boy who's missing. That's what everybody says, but I don't believe it. And besides, I don't care what anybody believes anyway. Where's Rabby? Where did you put Rabby? I didn't put him anywhere, Tommy. I know you had him when you came in. Maybe you left him in the bedroom. I'll get him. I'll get him. Rabby's getting pretty dirty again. Maybe it'd be a good idea if I put him in the washer tonight. He's not dirty. Leave Rabbi alone. It's your favorite. chocolate cake in the world. <laughs> you live in a world of fantasy, don't you? You know, that's why your show's so good. But don't you see? It's so much more fun. And besides, fantasy is just like a dream. And we all have dreams, don't we? Well, if you pretend enough, and you make your fantasies real enough, then it can come true. All your dreams can come true. <laughs> we certainly are philosophical tonight. I don't want to talk about it. And you can't make me. Leave me alone. Leave me alone. A little early, aren't you? Yeah, considering the fact that three people are dead, I'd say we're a little late. Well, they can't blame us, Vince. It's not a matter of blame, Graham. I'm trying to make some sense out of this. Now, we got a dead kid, dead parents, and the only clues we got are a baseball bat and a thread of cloth. Where do you think that thread came from? I don't know. It could be anything. Uh, an old t-shirt, anything. Uh, where do we go from here? Uh, damn if I know. We've got a lot of people to question. Come on, let's get out of here.
Have a nice day, honey. What kind of clicking sound? He wasn't sure. He's not even sure he really heard it. Might have been the television. And we need some answers, Vince. There's a lot of pressure. To catch a maniac, think like a maniac. Not think, be a maniac. Listen, any information you could give me about the victim or our daughter could be of help. Friends, relatives, or any strangers you might have seen around here in the last couple of weeks. I didn't see anybody. You mean to tell me you don't know anything about a woman who lives 100 yards away? I don't know anybody around here. I just live here. And you didn't see or hear anything unusual last Tuesday night? Look, Lieutenant, I told you before, I wasn't even here that night. I was at the club playing cards. Now, you can check on that. Yeah. And even if you had been here, you wouldn't have heard anything, right? Unit 23, come here, over. Unit 23? Yeah, this is Unit 23. Hey, is here, over. Vince, this is Graham. I'm on my way out to see a psychiatrist, a Dr. Wallach. He's got an office out in Colby. We found his name from some checkbook stubs of Harold Serlin from a couple years back. Over. Okay, give my best to Joni. 
Chao. Just look what you've done. You are such a bad girl. Get out of here. Well, that settles it. You're not going to the zoo with your father this Saturday. You know, in fact, I've got a good mind not to let you go to Ricky's birthday party tonight, either. Just look at that. Look at it! Yeah, you never mean to do anything. You're just like your father. You just don't care. Come on, we're going home. God bless you anyway. any money in the house? My husband will be home any minute now.
Yeah, Graham. Yeah, it works. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we were out by the pool. I couldn't get to her. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what? I'll be there in 20 minutes. What's the matter? What happened? Vince? Tom? Mommy. Oh, dear God. Don't punish me. No, Tommy. I won't punish you. It's time to go home. want to go home. Please, Tom. I want to play a game. I want to play a game. All right. Let's play hide and seek. OK. Me first. Cover your eyes and count to 10. No peeking. One, two, three, four.
Los Angeles Police Department, Department 23, Lieutenant Hayes, thank you. I don't know how important this is, Lieutenant, but, uh, well, I was checking the records this week, and some of them are missing. What kind of records? Just some additional material on the battered children. Well, yes, we know exactly which ones. They could be misplaced because we, oh, we've looked everywhere and we keep them in a specific place. Okay, I'll, uh, I'll send a man over to check it out. You're not gonna believe this, Graham. You're just not gonna believe it. Vince, I think I got something. Those missing hospital records, you ready for this? There were three missing from the files. Bobby Surlin's, Jefferson Taylor's, and Rosemary DeSica's. Man. That's weird. What's the story on the DeSica kid? Same M.O. Child beating. Where do they live? Who? The DeSicas, Harry. Come on. Uh, 117 Montana, apartment 4. All right, listen. Get out there and set up a stakeout as fast as you can. We'll meet you there. Uh, hey, Vince. You really think our boy's going to hit there next? Yeah, Harry, I really think so. Now, don't waste time trying to figure it out. Just get your ass in gear and do it. <laughs> Looks like a crap pile. Why don't you get some of this junk out of here? Rosemary, pick that stuff up. And no more television for you tonight. We've got all those dishes to do before you go to bed. Pick up some milk and coffee on your way home, will you? We haven't enough for tomorrow. Why in the hell couldn't you have thought of that earlier instead of sitting around on your big ass all day? Because I forgot, all right? Just keep it down, that's all. I don't want anybody, including the DeSicas, to know we're around here. Everything nice and normal, okay? Just keep me posted. Anything. Anything at all. Just let me know. Cute kid, huh? 
You read that? They did to their kid. Real nice people. Now maybe you ought to do the kid a favor. Let that freak go in there and do his number. Now listen to me, Harry, because I've had it up to here with your Dick Tracy crap. You've got one job. One place where you're supposed to be, that's watching the back entrance of that apartment. Now that's where you stay. Don't move unless I tell you to. Mrs. DeSica, I stopped by your apartment. Your daughter said you were down here. She would. It's the rent again. Two months late. Now, I can't afford to have this go on. The owner's getting on my back. It's not the first time I've had this trouble with you. Well, if you'd fix this dump up, maybe you'd get your rent on time. The sink is leaking, the tile is coming up in the kitchen. You can move any time you want to, just so long as your rent's paid up. Is that so? Well, I just might take you up on that. Well, that'd be just fine. My other tenants have been complaining about you anyway. You're yelling, the kid crying, always a commotion up there. As a matter of fact, I've been tempted to call the cops more than once. Okay, okay. My husband isn't home now. You'll get your check in the morning. Well, I'd better. Or you can start looking for another place to live.
Can I help you? Can I help you? I want these. Will you sharpen them? They're brand new. I want them sharper. Just take a minute. Take his gardening equipment. Okay, okay, I hear you. He'll get his check in the morning. You probably gave him some of that nasty mouth of yours. What's the kid got to do with this? You keep your damn hands off. I don't want her hurt anymore. Now look, I've got a customer. But I'm damn sick and tired of every time I come home for work, worrying about whether I'm going to find that kid in one piece. Now, you quit taking everything out on her. I've got to work late tonight, and you keep that rotten temper of yours under control. and keep down. Listen, I wasn't complaining. He's, he's coming. Uh, I don't want to miss him, so just stay put. Well, how about Harry? Harry, you on here? That's okay. I told him to shut off. I'm just checking every 15 minutes. I don't want him any more obvious than he already is. How long do you figure to keep this going? As long as it takes. Sooner or later, it's going to happen. He may be around already. <laughs> 